So in the other videos, I said that I'll go, I'll go through the different type of PLC cards that you'd find. And also what's important is the, is the communication media that is used by the CPU to communicate with the remote racks. As I said before, that the technology has changed over the years. Um, this is just a general link, just to illustrate the concept that the, the comms card of your, of your main rack can be used to, to interface or to be linked with the other comms cards from your remote racks. So it means now that the CPU requests information that is coming in, in this analog input card, then the comms card will then read this information coming from this particular card and then be able to send it to the comms card of the main rack where the CPU can be able to access the signals that will be coming from this particular card. So that's how you have your, your PLC comms. Now the technology has changed over the years in terms of you'd not use a, a link like this. In a separate video, I'll go into how you can do these the these PLC comms of the CP of the main rack communicating with the remote racks. Then another thing that I'll also touch on is the is the other cards, what they do and what they are. So if you have other equipment that you would want to interface with your PLC or you want to control from your PLC, say a, a VSD from another manufacturer that you'd want to incorporate in your system, then you'd have a particular card for that VSD, which can be slotted onto this main rack. If you have a device that, that uses another protocol communication-wise that is not the same as this PLC, then you'd want to have another card that is a translator between that device and your particular PLC. Another thing to note as well, in terms of the types of card that you'd have on a rack, you can have for this rack, maybe on the main rack. I can have digital input cards right through this. It does not necessarily mean that I need to have one digital input, one digital output and so forth. When it comes to comms communication cards, you don't have to have one. So if you want this PLC to be able to communicate on a device on another separate network than where you are now, you can simply have another card for communication and that card would serve as communication for whatever device that you'd want to have communicating with this particular PLC. So in terms of flexibility, there's a lot of flexibility that a PLC would offer because of, of this build and scaling up configuration with the, with the cards and the slots that you have. Also, some PLCs offer a compact design whereby you would not necessarily have a skeleton rack where you would slot your cards into that particular rack. Those PLCs, you can build them up like how you build Lego blocks. So for instance, if you want to have it only with four slots, then on the last card of the PLC, you then have like a terminating, a terminating plate. And if you want to expand that, you just remove the terminating plate, bring in this separate card and it just links like it would in a in a in a setup like so with the other with the last card on the rack so it, it offers a more compact system but some plcs already when you when you buy the rack you buy it empty and it also it has a predefined number of slots that you can that you can use so this is what, what i mean by before you do any plc programming it is very highly unlikely that you're gonna you're gonna get into an industry and be like hey i just want to program plcs it does not work that way you really need to have a good understanding of what you have in the field because the construction of your program is very much dependent on how the physical or the hardware of the P plc is laid out in the field. And the signals that you're gonna use in your program is also coming from your instruments and which is then coming to your PLC. So as well, if you're designing a control system, there's a lot that you need to consider. So if you, if there's another plant that is being installed where, where you are currently working, you need to know the number of inputs and outputs that I have available currently on my PLC and also understand if you want to have another remote rack, can you afford to do that for this particular PLC? There's also a limit in terms of if you have too much I.O. being served on that PLC, then it also affects your, your CPU, your memory of your CPU as so that will then affect your scan time. So what I mean is that the actual hardware or the construction of your PLC is very important because it really affects how you build your program and how you can get to automate your plant. So this is why I just did a quick video on, on what an actual PLC looks like generally because this 
this configuration you then need to build in your program so that the program knows exactly the type of hardware that you have. The program is controlling your hardware and that's where the sort of like the mechatronics come in where you have a, a program controlling like physical hardware or how that physical hardware behave or the signals that it then sends out. So in the next videos I'll be I'll be going through the PLC cards and then in, in a video after that I'll then tackle how the instruments are interfaced with the PLC cards.